But what is my overall take through all of these games? First of all, I think it's freaking amazing. This past weekend, Xbox showed off their latest game showcase. And if you guys haven't taken the time to watch this, I highly suggest that you pause this video and go take a look at it, because this is going to be all about that. Of course, we got the intro from Phil Spencer, but let's do a really quick rundown of the major games that we saw. And the first thing that Bethesda dropped on us was Doom. Now, when I saw this intro for Doom, it legitimately made me think of something like Valhalla. And this has kind of been a theme that we've seen lately, games that are doing a lot of the Norse god type thing. I will say I was almost a little put off by this because it kind of doesn't make sense with him having a shotgun and then this albeit really cool shield fitting into the universe of Doom, which has always had more advanced weaponry like lasers or rocket launchers. But I will say that this is classic Doom. They've literally taken Doom and put it back into that Valhalla style. We are expecting this in 2025 and of course straight from Bethesda it's going to be game pass straight day one and that is actually a theme for this entire showcase now not everything on this showcase is a day one release on game pass but the large majority of it is the next one we saw was state of decay 3 and i felt like they did a really good job of evoking the emotion of the teamwork for this i feel like they have a lot of really good personal touches and i'm really excited to see where the storyline of this game is going and again play it day one with game pass the next one we have coming up is a starfield update We've been hearing a lot about this, and I suppose you could argue that this is not a major release, but I personally really love Starfield. I think this Shattered Space is going to be an amazing addition. This next game really caught my eye. I like the graphics of it. I really like the overall premise of the game. I like that it has this old world feel, but at the same time, we can see with the main character that he has some sort of machinery, some sort of technology built into him. The premise of the game is that there's this giant clock, and every time that it counts down, people of that age just vanish. So with every countdown, they send a new expedition to try and stop this countdown. This graphic style remind me of A Plague's Tale, and I really enjoyed that series of games. It was darker, it was grittier, but it wasn't anything like a horror game. Now this seems like it's more of an RPG, maybe even a group RPG, and it looks like it's going to have some sort of like timed hits, so something maybe like Hi-Fi Rush where you get a bonus for doing these perfectly timed hits. Even though this is not a big well-known title, this is one to absolutely go back and watch the entire thing. Blizzard dropped the next edition of World of Warcraft. Now when World of Warcraft was a huge thing in like the late 90s, I was not a huge PC gamer so I never really got into like the World of Warcraft craze, but if you're somebody who likes World of Warcraft, I would imagine that this is going to be a good addition. Now there is a caveat to this one. This is going to be released in August but it's only going to be on PC. And in the actual showcase, it doesn't look like they showed any like real gameplay play footage, so I would expect it to follow that kind of top-down view that World of Warcraft does. Microsoft is still putting a lot of effort into Sea of Thieves, with Season 13 launching here in only a few weeks. I played Sea of Thieves very shortly when it first came out, and it looked interesting, but it didn't hold my attention for very long. That's of course not to say that it's a bad game, but I really appreciate the fact that Xbox is still supporting this player base for a game that originally launched on the Xbox One. I I saw this game and I thought, oh wow, this must be avowed. And I'm personally not the type of person that completely reads into a game when it's announced. So of course Obsidian is doing avowed and I watched a few things about it, but I really like to have a lot of surprise in games that I'm excited for and seeing just this overall play style, some of the enemies with the different type of weapons and the overall environment really made me think that this was avowed. Of course, this was not avowed and their theme is kill all gods. This is Flintlock the Siege of Dawn. By the way, those old flintlock pistols, very unreliable. But that's why it's a video game, and I kind of had a concern about this one. Like I said, I originally thought it was a vow, just with the play style. And if you go back and watch the whole showcase, you will see a few games that are like this. Now, I'm not saying that these games are bad or that somehow a vow is going to be bad because there's similar styles coming out. I'm saying it's easy to get lost in the mix of all of these things when they're so similar. And continuing with their 
God's theme, Microsoft is rehashing another one of their famous lines, this time being the Age of Mythology. I admit this is more of a remaster, more of a remake, and probably not one of their bigger showcase ones, but I remember playing Age of Empires in the 90s and to see this progression, to see that there is still enough of a fan base to continue to do remakes of these old top-down real-time strategies, I think is a really cool testament to what Microsoft Game Studios is doing. I think this is going to be a really cool throwback to all you older gamers like me who remember playing these classic RTSs and now seeing them in an updated format. I started watching the trailer for this next game, and I admit that when they revealed that this is the next installation in the Perfect Dark series, I was actually really surprised. Now I know that Rare is a part of the Microsoft Studios, but they really haven't done anything with Perfect Dark in quite some time. And as you can see compared to the old Nintendo 64, or even the Xbox 360, this is way advanced. And here with this trailer being all first person, for a second I actually thought it was Mirror's Edge. And I think it was just the way of the stylization or the first person perspective. It really just kind of had that throwback feeling to Mirror's Edge. But this being a perfect dark game, now would be a great opportunity to fire up your old 360 to go back and catch up on the story. And I can see that Microsoft is really proud of this next installation. Matt goes through and talks even more in depth about this game, and you can really tell that they want this to be a serious installation and a continuation of that story. Fable is next up on the list, and we actually saw a little bit of Fable at the last game showcase. Now I am personally not impressed by this Fable, and second of all I feel like they should have named it Fable something. Heck just call it Fable 4. And I really don't know what it is, but in my mind it didn't seem like it really stood out. It looked more like a generic medieval adventure game, and maybe it was just the way that the trailer was presented, because there was really nothing about it that I was like, oh wow, Fable is back. And keep in mind, these are all just my opinions. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the team shoot 'em up games, so games like Exo Primal or Anthem. This was one, though, that caught my attention because it has a change up, a shake up of the game. Basically, your team can use these different cards that give you some sort of bonus or scenery change or some sort of perk or a deficit for your opponents. And I thought it was just a really cool mix up. And I feel like they went back to a class of big head mode. And if you remember the old big head modes from the old team shooters, this is a whole lot of fun. And that is actually what would attract me as a gamer to this, because it's clearly not serious. The neon colors and all the other aspects of this game tell me that, hey, this is for fun. And Fragpunk is the name. We can expect this in 2025. And now on to the indie game scene. Some of my favorite games that I play on Xbox are indie produced. And I genuinely think that this new new game Winterboro is going to be no exception to that rule. If you love crafting, if you love home building, this is going to be a great indie game for you. Because you are a big city mouse, come back to your hometown, only to find everything in ruin. Now I'm not a huge on crafting type of player, but what is going to sell me on this game are that hand-drawn graphic style. I feel like it just takes you a lot more in-depth into the game. It's almost like you're reading and playing a story at the same time. Add a little bit of owl trauma, and I think you have the makings of a great game called Winterboro. If you love music games and like rhythm games, this next one is going to be an amazing one to check out. They don't exactly say when this game is set, but I really get the feel that it's like late 80s, maybe mid 90s. And if you've ever played a game called The Big Con or played a game called Road 96, I feel like this showcase really kind of mashed these two together. It almost has like a sci fi kind of dystopian feeling, but also set in like the magical world of the late 80s or early 90s. This one is called, of course, Mixtape. And yes, I can see the irony of a mixtape, but it's actually a CD. If you're not old enough to know what a tape is, go back and play Cassette Beasts, another great game that they just did an update for. But this mixtape actually looks really cool. Now Bethesda is back on the line again. Produced by Machine Games, this is one that everybody has been looking forward to because it is supposed to be an Xbox exclusive. And I'll be honest, I was kind of torn about this with the way they displayed the showcase. A lot of what we're seeing here is more cinematic 
cinematic movie, but there were some earlier shots that made the game look like it was in first person. This was most definitely one of the longer showcases, and we got to see a fair portion of this game. Of course, we got to see Harrison Ford dealing with the Nazis again, but I couldn't help but notice in this showcase, they never actually labeled them Nazis. You actually don't get a clear shot of like their armbands. So I wonder if they're actually kind of like skirting that line, but it definitely has that classic Indiana Jones feel. It's very in line with his same wit. It is most definitely Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, but it most definitely looks like a first person game with plenty of cinematics. And I kind of question how well it will play at first person. And it's been a huge challenge ever since LJN was just butchering movie to video game transitions game after game. So I feel like anytime you take a movie to video game, you are going to be presented with a huge challenge. Okay, here is Avowed. But now just look at this and think about what I said earlier in the video. A lot of these games have that similar kind of roguelike, kind of souls-like feel. Now I personally am excited for Avowed, I fell in love with Obsidian Studios from the first time that I played Fallout New Vegas. So for me personally, I have some pretty high expectations for this game. And I think a lot of people are going to try to compare this to like Skyrim, but a major thing that I noticed between those two is just the overall colors in Avowed. Everything is a lot brighter. You almost get the feeling that it has this futuristic element to it. Day one release with Game Pass, I will be playing this game. I've got one more game to talk about, and this game I think was a surprise to everyone. I really think Microsoft hit the nail on the head with this. A lot of Xbox gamers want the return to the glory days of the Xbox 360, and as soon as I saw these two characters come through the wall, I knew exactly what they were doing. And a lot of people complain that Xbox doesn't listen to their players, but this is a complete testament that they do. If you haven't figured it out yet, this is a new Gears of War. I remember the first time I played Gears of War on my friend's Xbox 360, and I was just completely blown away by it. I think this is going to be a really good evolution and next installment for Gears of War. And I would bet you that Microsoft is really going back to the origins with this one. I would expect very classic style of gameplay, and overall I have high hopes for this Gears of War. Now I'm not going to get into COD 6 right now, because I feel like Call of Duty is a whole beast all of its own. But what is my overall take through all of these games? First of all, I think it's freaking and amazing. We got some old classics, we got additions to games that we're currently playing, and we have plenty of day one releases to look forward to. Now it feels like for the most part, the games had this theme of adventure or one player battles. I personally would have liked to see some more co-op, and that's not to say that some of these games don't support that, but the majority felt like single player games. And I've been hearing some really good reactions to this game showcase. A lot of the people are just blown away by what we can expect from my Microsoft. And I think this really flies in the face of everybody who keeps saying that Xbox is just dead or that Microsoft is somehow just giving up. Microsoft is putting a ton of resources for personnel and finances into getting all of these games into your hands. But the biggest benefit I saw out of this was this screen right here. And to all the people that complain that this is not sustainable, that is for Microsoft and their finance team to worry about. Right now, I want to know that I've got the benefit of having all of these games available day one with Game Pass. I really hope that this is a renewed interest for you. I know this is a really renewed interest for me and look forward to our player base growing on Xbox into 2025 and beyond. Leave me a comment on this video. What did you think of the showcase? I've been John, by the way, this here is the Xbox Basement, and we will see you guys in the next one.